Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Rafi Rahman. On behalf of myself, Dr. Mohamed Osto, Dr. Kevin Nguyen, and Dr. Tess McCready, I wanted to introduce you all to our presentation titled Production in Healthcare Facility Onset Postoperative Sepsis, a Resident-Led Quality Improvement Initiative. So just a quick background. Postoperative sepsis has an estimated annual incidence of 1.2% in the United States and is associated with significant morbidity and mortality. Postoperative sepsis is defined as the development of sepsis during the same hospitalization after a surgical procedure. Our purpose was to characterize the postoperative incidence, sepsis incidence at our hospital, Ascension Providence, Rochester. Uh, which is a 290-bed tertiary community hospital in the Detroit metropolitan area. We wanted to conduct a quality initiative uh, that essentially would help reduce the incidence of post-operative sepsis at our hospital and improve outcomes for patients. In order to achieve our purpose, uh, we decided to conduct a multi-pronged a quality improvement initiative um, that really looked at uh, patients at our hospital from January 1st, 2022 through March 31st, 2023. So we performed a retrospective chart review and identified post-operative sepsis cases in our healthcare system. And then we conducted a plan, do, study, act cycle also known as a PDSA model, um, to really help learn more about these patients and these cases and to help guide and structure our initiative. So after conducting this retrospective chart review, we identified 13 cases of post-operative sepsis uh, that were identified during this time period. Afterwards, we conducted a fishbone diagram that depicts some of the reasons that could have uh, ultimately led to uh, the outcome of post-operative sepsis. So as we take a look at this diagram, in terms of there were, there were many factors involved. Some categories include the people that were involved, some of the policies, actions, um, the location, as well as just some hospital circumstances. So, for example, for the people, there were multiple people involved in the uh, care of these patients. Uh, physicians, resident physicians, attending physicians, uh, nursing staff, speech, language, pathology. Um, in terms of policies and actions, things as such as, you know, the timing of the infectious disease consult, you know, the timing of the initiation of antibiotics and fluids, you know, speech language, uh, pathology evaluation, precautions such as aspiration precautions, um, things of that nature. As far as the location goes, you know, items such as the medical floor, surgical floor, ICU rehabilitation. And lastly, you know, even hospital circumstances, you know, understanding of understaffing of personnel you know, high patient burden and acuity, you know, all of these factors uh, ultimately could have contributed to the various individual cases of post-operative sepsis. So after conducting uh, the retrospective chart review and creating that fishbone diagram, we ultimately developed um, an initiative, uh, the transitional year residents working alongside her attending Dr. McCready as well as, you know, hospital leadership. And this intervention really consisted of a multidisciplinary approach, right? We focused on education uh, regarding aspiration precautions, appropriate oral care, indications for speech to language pathology involvement, and even choking parameters. And we found that after implementation of our initiative, there were zero cases of post-operative sepsis noted between January 2023 to March 2023 during the examination period. So the key takeaways from our study. 
our quality improvement intervention significantly reduced the incidence of post-operative sepsis at Ascension Providence Rochester Hospital. And for patients who are at high risk of aspiration, you know, we found that speech language pathology in particular should be promptly consulted for further evaluation. In addition, items such as aspiration precautions, pro appropriate oral care, and choking parameters should be initiated in these parent patients. Lastly, you know, providers should not hesitate to consult infectious disease for early evaluation of patients who could potentially be coming septic. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for your attention and time, everyone. Please let us know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.